Welcome in. My name is Arya and I'm a research analyst at FinChat, the world's leading stock research platform. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at KPIs, key performance indicators, what they are, how to use them, and in what cases they're relevant to your investment research. So first and foremost, we're going to navigate over to the finchat.io website. We have one of a kind coverage for KPIs for over 2000 public companies. And so for example, just to kind of show it up, uh, I think we should start off with Netflix. And by the way, you could type in both the ticker and the actual full name. And so when you search for Netflix, the overview tab populates on your screen. There's a handful of different metrics in your basic uh, growth and valuation metrics, the market cap, so on and so forth. But we're concerned about the segments and KPIs for this business. So we're going to navigate over to the financials tab. Obviously you're faced with the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, so on and so forth. But we really want to focus in on the segments and KPIs all the way at the end here. And actually, I'm going to click on this uh, reverse dates button so we could uh, more clearly be able to take a look at these numbers. And you'll see for a business like Netflix, you have a handful of different segments available to you that this company reports. So um, they actually break down their revenues on a geography basis. So you're able to know, for example, that they made $17 billion from the United States and Canada regions, Europe, Middle East, and Africa made up about $12 billion, Latin America five and Asia Pacific made about four and a half. And so the cool thing about FinChat is that not only do we provide the data to you, which again, I'm going to mention our software is a one of a kind aggregate of all these different KPIs, but also we have a beautiful charting interface, which you could utilize to supercharge your investment research. So if we simply just click on all these different segments, you'll see that it starts to populate in the charting interface above. And so right now what we've done is we've put all these different segments in terms of individual bar charts. Now, although this is great on its own, ideally we would like to make this chart a little bit easier to read. So what we could do is we could click on the stacked bar chart option. And what that does is it just puts all the different segments on an annual basis on the same bar chart so you could track it easily over the years. Now, although this is great on its own as well, it's a little bit hard to depict uh, different trends. You could look at the growth rates towards the bottom of your screen here and easily notice that, for example, the Asia Pacific region has grown the fastest among all the different segments of Netflix's business. And then the Latin America and United States and Canada regions have grown the slowest. But wouldn't it be easier if we could actually see those trends on a percentage basis in terms of what percent of total revenues these segments are making up over time? That's why we actually recently added the common size feature. And so if you click on common size, what that does is it calculates that metric or that segment divided by the total row amount. So for example, it would take the United States and Canada revenue, which was, I think it was 17 billion. It would divide that by the total revenue that Netflix has generated over the past 12 months. And now what you could see is you have this beautiful chart stacked with the various different segments of Netflix's business. And you can easily draw insights such as the Asia Pacific region, going up as a percentage of revenues from 6% to 11% over the past five years. And in the same time frame, you have the UCAN region going from 52% to 45% and declining as a percentage of revenues. So the insights that you would be able to draw from this is that Netflix over time is diversifying away from the United States and Canada region. And at the same time, that's a result of those other regions growing significantly faster than the UCAN region, which intuitively makes sense. It started out in North America and that's probably one of its most more uh, mature markets. But our metrics aren't restricted just to segment data. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that there's a sort of header for key performance indicators, and we have a plethora of data built into the website here. So for example, we have total paid net membership additions. What this shows you is the number of people globally that Netflix added compared to the year prior. So for example, for the fiscal year 2024, they added 41 million new members in 2023. That number was at 30 million the year before that nine, so on and so forth. And then additionally, not only do we track uh, paid membership additions, you can also track paid memberships at the end of the period. So at the end of 2024, Netflix had just over 300 million total users on their platform. And just as an FYI, Netflix said that they're going to stop reporting this in the future. So it'll probably start to look like, uh, you know, the DVD revenues here that they discontinued the KPI, they just don't report it anymore. And then one last thing, which is probably my favorite thing to track is the average revenue per membership. And I think this is very telling of sort of the significance of all the segments that we just covered a second ago. So if we simply just click on these and populate it over on the charting interface, you'll see that you know, despite the UCAN region going down as a percentage of revenues, in terms of the average revenue per user, those are by far the most profitable users for Netflix. On average, a Netflix member in the United States or Canada is producing roughly $17 of revenue for Netflix, 
This compares to somebody in the APAC region, which actually this has gone down over the past five years. They're producing roughly $7 of revenue per membership. So again, you're able to draw some of these insights, although the UCAN region has been the slowest growing and has decreases a percentage of revenue in terms of what those individual members are worth. The average UCAN member is worth double that of a Latin American member or a Asia Pacific subscriber. And then you could see that these other three segments, you know, although the prices in some cases have gone up, but in the case of the uh, APAC region, it has actually gone down. It seems that Netflix can flex their pricing power the most with North American subscribers. Again, intuitively makes sense. It's the most mature market, probably the highest switching cost. People are very ingrained into it and it's part of culture and there are definitely higher switching costs involved compared to new subscribers in the Asia Pacific region or whatever the case may be, right? And actually another thing I wanna mention is our KPIs aren't restricted just to compare against the company itself. So taking metrics of you know the Asia Pacific region versus the North American region and that type of stuff, we actually allow you to compare metrics against other companies. So this will start to get important when you're comparing competitors. So for example, if we go over to the charting tab, a very common comparison that many of our users like to track on a quarterly basis is comparing the various different cloud segments of the big hyperscalers. So for example, your Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. And so what we're gonna do over here on the charting tab, we're just gonna quickly bring in all these different companies. And it works a little bit different here than compared to the analysis tab. What you're gonna to wanna to do is click on the uh, search metrics bar and you have a handful of different items that you could choose from. For the sake of today's video, we're only focused on the segments and KPI section. So we're gonna click on that and then go to Alphabet's KPIs. Now again, we have a bunch of different KPIs that we track for Alpha Alphabet, but we're only really focused on the cloud revenue here. And then for Amazon, same thing, we're gonna find AWS revenue for Microsoft, they recently changed their reporting, but I believe it's this one, Intelligent Cloud Revenue, and that seems to be the correct one, right? So now we have the three different companies and their cloud revenues over time. So, but the issue we have now is that all these different charts are, you know, like on a, on a company basis, they're, they're on their own chart. You have Googles, you have Amazons, you have Microsoft. But what we're gonna wanna do here is from the right-hand side of your screen, click on this little dropdown. You could sort by metric, by company, which is the version we have it on now. And then the one that we're actually gonna choose is the single panel. What this does is it puts all these different metrics, regardless of what company they are or what metric it is, it puts them all onto the same chart. And unfortunately, Google only started uh, reporting their cloud revenue in 2017. So what we're gonna do is with the slider, we're gonna bring it forward a little bit. And so now you're able to compare the three different cloud businesses next to each other. And of course you're given the total change in, in terms of percentage and the Kager and all that great stuff. But of course, if you wanted to compare the actual growth rates of these businesses, you could click on percentage change. I'm not gonna do that for now, just cause it, it makes the chart a little bit messy. You also are able to manipulate the chart just like you were able to back on the analysis tab. So clicking on, for example, the stacked bar chart to make the three of them stacked. The cool thing about this is when, when it's stacked, it gives you the total amount. So you can see that total cloud revenue was 43 billion in 2017, and that has grown more than six times between the three of them to $250 billion of revenue over the past 12 months. Additionally, we could change these into line charts. And admittedly, I would say this is probably the best way to kind of track the progress of these businesses against one another, seeing if they're overtaking each other or kind of gaining on one another, so on and so forth. And then going back to the growth rates, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toggle on the percentage change, but I'm just gonna click hide on the actual absolute revenue amount. So what you have on your screen now is the actual growth rate of these businesses. So we can see that, for example, Google is the fastest growing one, roughly 31% in 2024 compared to the year prior. Then you have Microsoft at 22, Amazon at 19. And with that being said, thank you for watching. Feel free to reach out to us through our help center if you have any questions or concerns, which can be found under the settings icon on the left-hand side of your screen. Have a great day.